I'm Steve for This Week With Cars and today I'd like to talk about jump packs. I use one of these just about every day for something. Spread out here I have several different kinds. These larger ones use lead acid batteries, that's why they're so big. These have been around for a very long time, I've been using these for years. This one here even has a built-in air compressor. And then down here I have these little ones which use more modern battery technologies. And these little ones have just as much starting power as these old big ones do. The different battery technologies between these means that there is slightly different uses between the two of them. One thing that you can't do with the small jump packs is charge them up off another vehicle. And what I mean by that is if I took this lead acid jump pack and I tried to start a car and it didn't start, I could then connect this to another running car just straight to the battery and it will very quickly charge this battery back up then I can go and jump start the first car again. When you're dealing with the type of batteries that are in these small jump packs these have a battery management system that manages each cell and makes sure that it's charging correctly so that there aren't any fires or problems when charging it. So these little ones do not charge when they're connected to the car. Once the car is started and the alternator or generator is running, these little packs don't charge back up in the same way that the lead acid packs do. So if you're going into an area and you're not sure that the car is going to start right away, one of these small packs may not be the one that you want to use because it takes quite a while for these to charge back up. This little pack here is a pretty advanced one from Snap-on. It has a wall adapter that charges it up. And this one here just uses USB-C to charge back up. So this charges in the same way that a cell phone battery would, except this is much larger. So it's going to take some time to charge this up if you've run it down. However, giving yourself a jump start is not the only purpose for carrying one of these around in your old car. One reason that I carry these around all the time is these new ones have USB ports. So under the cover here, you can see a couple USB ports. So I can charge my phone off of this and I don't have to worry about having a cigarette adapter or a USB adapter in any of the old cars that I drive. If all you're doing is charging your phone off of this, this will give you many charges of your phone and you can just throw this in your old car, forget about it, and you always have power if you need it. Another feature that these have sometimes are little lights that are on them. This one here has a light which you can turn on and use as a flashlight. So if your car breaks down, you don't have a flashlight handy, this light is going to last a really long time. Another difference between these new jump packs and the old ones, in my experience, these work really well with modern vehicles and the old lead acid type work really well with carbureted vehicles. The carbureted vehicles, you generally have to crank longer, especially if it doesn't have an electric fuel pump and these small ones just haven't lasted long enough to allow me to crank a lot of cars and get them to start. This is a brand new one that I just got today. It's from a company called Top Done. I haven't even tried this yet. So I think today, let's go see if we can start a bunch of cars up with this, see how well it works with the old cars. I know that this is a great addition to carry in your car because it has USB. This one right here retails for about $100, and there's a link to it in the description below. Let's take a look at this jump starter real quick. This is the power switch right here. On this side, you have the input. This is the USB-C charging port. On the other side, it has a DC output. You could use this for things such as keeping a computer uh, up so that you don't have to reset the radio stations and time, things like that by plugging this into an O2B2 port with a DC to O2B2 adapter. And then here at the top, we have two USB ports. The white port puts out two amps of power and the top one, the blue one, puts out three amps of power. And this right here is where we connect our jumper cables to. Has this little box on the end of the jumper cables. We just plug that in like that and then we can connect this to our battery. Another thing I really like about this one is it comes with a carry case. So you can hide this away inside the case, not worry about it damaging the interior of your car or rolling around in the trunk, making a bunch of noise and dents. 
As long as you remember to periodically charge this, you could tuck it away in your car, forget about it, and it's there when you need it. I want to make this test completely fair, and I don't know which of these cars will start currently or not. I know which ones I have run and driven already this year. So I'm just going to go down the line, try to start each car, and when we find one that doesn't start, we'll try the jump pack. And I'm going to start right here with this bug-eyed Sprite. This is uh, Barn Sprite number one, if you have been watching my channel for a while. Looks like the headlights barely light up, so this one will definitely need a jump. Just connect the jump pack, obviously the black lead to the negative connection and the red one to the positive connection. Doesn't matter if your car is positive or negative earth, it will work the same way either way. Connect the jump pack. This green light is flashing. That means it identified that the battery is there. If your battery is discharged completely, I'm not sure if it will recognize the battery or not. And in that case, there's a button on the side that you just hit and it's called boost. And that will output power even when it doesn't detect a battery. The engine almost started there and the jump pack detected that and I have to disconnect it before I can try again. In the instructions it says that they want you to wait 20 seconds in between trying to start it. Let's give this one more try. That right there was the perfect example of trying to start a car that is at all winter. The battery wasn't in the best of shape and I did have to crank it enough to get the fuel up to the engine before it would start. When I was done starting the car, this was down to the 50% mark, but it's back up again at the 75% mark. Let's keep going, see how many cars I can jump start with this. First, I'll try to start the TVR 2500M. If it doesn't start, we'll use the jump pack. This one started, we'll try the next TVR. This one, the battery had enough power to power the fuel pump, but not enough to run the starter. Our battery pack is still at 75%. Connect this one up. You can see our green connected light has come on. There's a second car down. We are still at 75%. 
What I think we were witnessing there is for your protection, these actually don't supply power to these leads all the time. They wait until they sense not only a battery, but that you're trying to crank the engine. So it looks for a quick voltage drop and then it starts to supply power. And so that's why when I started to crank, you saw all the sparks flying. This started to supply power to both the battery and to the car to try to start the car. The positive terminal on the battery here is a little bit corroded, so it probably didn't have the best connection. That's what the sparks were from. But we're still at 75%. Let's try another car. Next down the line is this Sprite, but just last week I had that car running. So I think the next one is this Innocenti. I'm not sure when the last time I started this up was. I don't think I've started it yet this year. This one had enough power to run the fuel pump, but not quite enough power to crank over. Let's try the jump pack. jump pack now is down to 25%. Normally I wouldn't try starting a car if my jump pack was only at 25%, but since we're doing this test, let's move on to the next vehicle, see if it has one more start in it. This MG Midget is the second car that I ever bought. I still own it. First, let's see if it starts on its normal battery, and if not, we'll try the jump pack. I turned the key, this one is dead as a doornail. The pump didn't run, the ignition light didn't turn on, nothing happened at all. I don't have high hopes through the jump pack working at all, but let's give it a try. I'm going to use the boost mode. I think that's it for the jump pack. It just doesn't have enough juice to get this one going. It has a dead battery. All of the scenarios that I've tried today have actually been pretty hard starts. I'm really impressed with this jump pack. Bringing a car back after it's been stored for the winter is one of the hardest starts that you'll have on a car. If you were out with your car club, someone needed a jump start, you know, they've been driving their car all day, you could probably go down the line and start up every single car with the jump pack, but I threw some really rough conditions at it today. Again, if you want to get yourself one of these, there's a link in the description below to where you can buy this. And remember, if you want to see more videos like this, comment below and click subscribe.